This video is brought to you by Squarespace, helping you make beautiful websites quickly and easily. A cop pulls you over for speeding. Fascist? A security guard tells you no smoking here. Proto-fascist? An Apple Store employee won't give you your rightful Apple Care refund. Diet fascist? In today's news cycle, no person has called a fascist more than this man, Donald Trump. If a substantial number of educated people agree that he's a fascist, why hasn't this whistleblowing changed his political momentum? Why has he been able to shake it off like it ain't no thang? Perhaps it's because most people don't really know what fascism is. The Oxford English Dictionary defines fascism as an authoritarian and nationalistic right-wing system of government and social organization. Hmm, that leaves a lot of room for interpretation. So let's consider the historical etymology of fascism. That starts with the early Roman Republic. The heads of the Republic, the praetors, consuls, and quaestors, were protected by bodyguards called lictors. When they walked through the streets, the lictors waved a sort of whacking stick called a fasces, made up of a bundle of birch rods tied together with red cord. As a metaphorical object, the fasces represented the different social classes tied together, working towards a common goal. As individual birch rods, they're weak, but as a group, they're stronger than their individual parts, like One Direction. Still perplexed? Don't feel bad. Italian novelist and philosopher Umberto Eco, who studied language and lived under Mussolini's reign, agrees that the concept of fascism is confusing. Fascism is a buzzy term. Given that there is not one unifying principle or ideology, it's hard to pin down. For Eco, there are certain sufficient qualities that fascism contains. Conveniently, he lists 14 of these tropes, such as fascists don't take kindly to criticism. Disgusting reporters, horrible people. They appeal to nationalism through xenophobia. He's a Mexican. We're building a war between here and Mexico. They're built on a frustrated middle class. Middle income in this country is being decimated. Fascism gains steam through selective populism. Minority rights are given up for the larger group. Total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Newspeak, or simplified, digestible ways of communication, rules fascist discourse. We're going to win for the country. We're going to win, 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 and we're not stopping. Who likes me in this room? <laughs> The point is not that Donald Trump is a fascist, dear viewer. The point is, does this checklist even help? Has our liberal use of language robbed serious words of their power? In his essay, What is Fascism?, English writer George Orwell argued that fascism, as a word, is pretty much meaningless. Even if people could decide on a working definition, it's overused and watered down. It's used as a favorite attack from the left to mean anything from a shrewd venture capitalist to a person overly concerned with grammar. They're just sort of insults that people throw around willy-nilly. The larger issue is that when we divorce history from the discussion, when people think it's okay to call a police officer, a telemarketer, or the PTA president a fascist, we remove the historical significance from actual political movements. It belittles the actual suffering that occurred from the pairing of Hungary and Grimbus Jula, Romania and Ion Antonescu, Austria and Engelbert Dolfus, Italy and Benito Mussolini, Spain and Francisco Franco, Croatia and Antti Pavlic, Argentina and Juan Perón, Chile and Jorge González von Marí, Portugal and Antonio de Oliveira Salazar, Norway and Vidkun Quisling, and Germany and Adolf Hitler. News stories that say things like neo-Nazis worship Taylor Swift as an Aryan goddess who's turning America onto fascism. Here's why. May seem cute. Perhaps it's humorous to call Obama a fascist or heroic to put a sticker on your guitar proclaiming that this machine kills fascists. But it is distance from the reality of fascism. Fascism as a term has lost its linguistic oomph. The same way it isn't shocking to hear a person called a racist or a sexist on the daily, when phrases that have significant historical and cultural power become just another catchphrase due to overuse, they lose their power. When we don't respect the words that we use, the power they hold, and the history they contain, people stop caring. These words are of no use to anyone as swear words. Even if Trump was an actual card-carrying fascist, could we call him out on it? Or have we come to the place as a society where we're completely deprived of the tools to effectively criticize? So, dear viewer, have we robbed ourselves? of the ability to stop the next fascist dictator? Hello, dear viewer. Thanks for watching. Want to fend off tendencies towards fascist dictators? Put your energy towards greater expression and pluralism by building a beautiful website on Squarespace. Squarespace has made it easy for anyone to make a glorious website, and they're giving you 10% off your first order when you use the offer code 8-bit. With glorious templates and easy-to-use tools, they've made it simple to create the website you want. 
Go to squarespace.com 8-bit or use the link in the description below to sign up today. You'll get a free 14-day trial and you can see for yourself. Don't forget to use the offer code 8-bit to get 10% off your order. And we're working on more great videos for you, so if you're not already a subscriber, be sure to give Mussolini's tummy a poke by clicking here. You'll be taken to our channel page where you can find more episodes, and be sure to hit the subscribe button while you're there. As always, thanks for watching, beloved viewer.